Hi everyone, welcome to another session of learning at Lambert Labs. Today's presenter is Rafiq, uh, so I will hand over to Rafiq. Great, thanks Tom. Um, so today we're going to look at how to we can quickly build serverless applications in AWS with the framework Chalice. Um, so first of all, let's just look at why we would want to go serverless. Um, the major benefit of serverless is that you don't have to manage servers. So serverless um, architectures are often built around uh, functions as a service. Um, so in AWA, in AWS, that would be a, uh, Lambda. In Google, that would be Cloud Functions. Um, and yeah, it just means that there's a lot less time spent provisioning and managing and patching servers. It's often much cheaper, um, especially for apps which are in the development stage or are proof of concept, because you don't have to pay for a server to be running the whole time. You only pay for when your code is actually being run. And this has pretty huge cost benefits, particularly if you're in development and there aren't that many people even using the site. You have faster development cycles um, because you often split uh, different aspects of your application into different Lambda functions. Um, then each of those functions can be deployed very quickly and you can have very rapid development cycles and you don't have to wait as you sometimes do with a monolithic application for many moving parts to be updated before you kind of can push just your one update to one method that is kind of needs updating. Uh, it's modularly scalable. Um, so if you split your um, application up into separate Lambda functions, then each one of those functions can just scale to the size that it needs to be. Um, and you don't have to scale the whole application as a whole uh, to, to meet that demand. So what is a serverless architecture? So we're going to be looking at AWS because Chalice is an AWS framework. Um, so often it will be based around a Lambda function. So the most simple architecture would be maybe one Lambda function. If we're building a REST API, which is what we're going to be doing today, um, we would have something on the front end, um, like Amazon API Gateway, to handle those HTTP requests and pass them and trigger separate Lambda functions. Then you may have something on the back end um, to store state. So you might have Amazon DynamoDB as a common uh, platform for this. Um, if, we, if we want a NoSQL database, obviously if you wanted to store more structured data, you could use something like Amazon RDS or Aurora. And then like this, that's probably the most basic uh, architecture that you'd have. And then this architecture could scale. So we could have lots of different Lambda functions. We may want to have a caching service and, and store data memory. Um, obviously, you can't do this in the Lambda function because the Lambda function is kind of transient. Um, so you'd use a, um, something like AWS Elastic Cache. And then we may want to serve static assets as well, in which case we'd probably use something like S3 and maybe put Cloud Front on the front of it as a CDN. So that's kind of how your serverless architecture can get uh, more complex. So what is Chalice? Uh, Chalice is a micro web framework for writing serverless apps in Python and then deploying them to AWS Lambda. Uh, it's loosely based on the Flask syntax, um, so it probably will look quite familiar. Um, and it has native integrations with uh, API Gateway, um, S3, uh, SNS, SQS, and some other AWS services as well. And it also automatically uh, generates IAM policies as well. So let's look at how we use it. Um, okay, so we are going to build a CRUD interface um, via an API 
for interacting with a Dynamo DB um, instance. So I've already created this Dynamo DB instance, and we're just going to build Lambda functions that are going to write and retrieve data from it, and then we're going to put those on an API uh, with AP, uh, Amazon API Gateway. So first of all, I'm just going to activate a um, Python environment. So I built this one earlier. It's just a, a clean environment, and we're running Python 3.8 in it. And then we want to install our requirements. So what we want to install is Chalice. And then what we will also install, install is so free for interacting with the DynamoDB instance. So now to create our Chalice project, um, we just run the command Chalice, new project, we'll call it Chalice. And then you can see that it's been generated in that Chalice CRUD directory. So we will navigate into that. And let's have a look at what has been created in here. So we have this app.py file, um, which will contain our Lambda application code. We have a requirements.txt file, which is just the requirements that the application is going to need. And then we also have this .chalice directory which contains uh, some of the config required uh, for creating these Lambda functions. Um, so what we will do now is we'll just do the freeze, and write that to requirements.txt. And then we can have a look at how we're going to build this. So what we need to do first is the Lambda function is going to run within IAM role. Uh, this role by default will not have access to the DynamoDB instance. So what we first need to do is provide it access to that DynamoDB instance. So if we go to our .chalice directory, this config.json, um, and this is kind of the config for our Lambda setup, and what we're going to do is we're just going to set auto gen policy to false. And then we're going to have to um, dictate our policy ourselves. So I have created one of these earlier, this policy dev.json. And what this policy does is, in this section up here, it just gives it permission to write the logs. And then in this section here, we just have permission to update and retrieve and scan our DynamoDB table. So we've I've already created this table in DynamoDB. It's called records. And we've just defined the resource that it can access here. So I'm going to copy that. into the dot chalice inquiry. And that's all we need. Um, that's all we need in terms of IAM configuration in order to access the DynamoDB. So now we can actually add the roots. Um, so we can look at this app.py that has been created. Um, we can see here that they've created this hello world route. Um, you can see this decorator syntax is where the magic happens, um, which is kind of pretty similar to Flask. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to grab this application code, which I wrote earlier. We're going to paste that in here. And then we can just run through it. Um, so 
So we um, first we define our chalice app um, up here, and we then are going to create a utility function, which is to get the application database. So this uses Botto3 to retrieve a resource from DynamoDB, and it retrieves, retrieves our resource, which is the table records. And then we can have a look at our first route. So if I uncomment this, um, you can see that this is going to be a route for creating records in our database and it's going to take a post method. So it takes some time to deploy these Lambda functions. So I'm actually just gonna hop over and run the deployment first. So to deploy it, all we need to type, once we have our route defined here, is just chalice deploy. You can see it starts creating the deployment package there and then it will create the Lambda functions and API gateway and also the IAM roles. Um, so let's have a look back at that function while that's happening. So we have our decorator here, which defines how this Lambda function is called. It's uh, app.root, which means it's an HTTP endpoint. Um, we define this function create. Um, we can retrieve the data JSON body from the app.current request. And then all we're doing here is assigning a UUID um, as the item ID. We are using our utility function to get the app database, and then we're putting an item in here. So we're just going to be score, uh, storing a score and a player as if we were creating a game database. Um, so we have an ID, we have the player, and then we're just going to return a response saying that it's been successfully created and giving it the item ID. So we can still see here that Chalice is still deploying. It's now created the IAM role, it's created the Lambda function, and it's created the REST API. And we can see that the resources have been deployed and we've been provided with this URL, which we can use to call the functions. I open up a Python window and the import request library. Let's set the URL equal to that. And we're going to call our endpoint. So we're going to do r equals requests dot get. We'll call our URL. And we will turn the list endpoint. And a missing authentication token which I'm not sure why that has popped up. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm I am posting to the wrong endpoint, so that is why that is not working. Um, so we are actually creating a instance first. So I'm going to add a score and um, add the layer, and we will say three hundred. And then instead of this get request, which we haven't defined yet, we will do request post. And we will go to URL of create. 
we will specify input data in the request. Now we have a 200 response. So if we do r.json, we can see this message that we have is that it's created and we've returned an ID. Um, so at the moment, we have no way of actually retrieving that data. Um, so we're going to add some more endpoints to kind of list the data and get the data. Um, so we have these endpoints here. We have this first endpoint is to list the data. And then we have this second endpoint, which is to get the data. So you can see here for this list function, uh, we just define a list endpoint, takes the method get, and we just scan the database and return all of the items. And then for this second route, we define the get and we have an entry ID. So what we can do is we can use curly braces to define a variable within the URL, and then we can pass that to a function um, as a function variable. And then we can just get the app database and retrieve this item by key. Um, and then if we don't retrieve the item, then we return a not found error. So now we have those changes to our application code. We can just deploy the changes really quickly and easily to just run Chalice, deploy it again. And then wait for it to deploy, which takes a bit of time, but as you saw, it doesn't take that long. Um, we can run through this last route as well um, while we're waiting for that. Just another route, which is going to delete the delete an entry. So again, this takes the entry as a variable in the URL pattern, takes a post method, and we just pass that entry ID to the function and grab the database, delete it, and return a message. So we'll just wait for that uh, Lambda function to deploy. And as you can see, so what this does as well is we don't really need to find how the API gateway works. Um, it just handles it all kind of out of the box. We just defined our Lambda function and the API gateway is kind of created and then the REST API URL is uh, created. And then obviously you can define your own domain name settings so that we uh, can use our own um, domain name in this section instead of having the Amazon AWS one. Um, nicely as well, we have HTTPS auto enabled, so you don't need to worry about uh, SSL certificates or anything like that. So yeah, we just wait for that function to update. We'll deploy this next delete function immediately. And what we'll do is we're going to create a few more scores. Well, add to the database. So, like this. And these are just more entries we are going to add. Uh, we can see now that the resources have been deployed successfully. Um, so let's have a go at calling that list endpoint. So we're going to do like the rest of get and the URL and then just the list endpoint at the end there. So we run that function. 
and we get a 200 response. And we are returned the items in the database, which is just that first item that we've created. So let's have a go at creating a few more items quickly. So we will post this data too, which is this entry here. We'll post this data three as well. Let's check we're getting the right responses there. Um, and then let's call that list endpoint again. And we can see that all of those entries have been successfully added to the database. What I'm going to do now is just deploy it again so that we have that delete functionality in there as well. Um, and you can see that we very quickly built a, a, a web API, a REST API endpoint, which is exposed to the internet and usable and which is interacting with a DynamoDB instance already. We have the ability to get a individual ID. Just by specifying that ID in the URL. And we can just return each individual ID as well. We can do that for any number of these IDs as well. So we have clearly demonstrated the ability to create and retrieve um, data in a DynamoDB using this REST API. And if we hop back to here, we can just wait for this delete method. To run that, we will just be running a post request to its URL and delete. Um, that probably isn't going to work yet because uh, function has not been created. Um, and probably see that that will work as we expect and uh, we have the ability to delete as well. So we have this functionality which allows us for rapid development and deployment of um, REST APIs on AWS Lambda um, and really nice quick integration with the rest of the uh, AWS kind of serverless offering as well. And then we want to delete all of the resources of the project. We can just run Alice delete. Sorry, Rafik, I, so, I think we've actually, we've just lost your terminal. Uh, we're on your PyCharm. There we go. Uh, perfect. Thanks. Uh, um, OK, uh, so yeah. Um, if we want to delete the uh, chalice, um, or if we want to delete all of the resources to do a chalice, we just run chalice delete, and then it will delete the REST API. It deletes the function, and it deletes the role as well. So it's really easy to build, it's really easy to deploy, and it's really easy just to clean up at the end. Um, so yeah, that is kind of a quick uh, demo of what you can do with Chalice. Um, obviously, the drawbacks of this is that it locks you into AWS. Um, so if you're using it, you kind of want to know that you're going to be staying with AWS. Um, and then there are other offerings like serverless, which uh, are kind of platform agnostic, um, but require a little bit more kind of set up. So I think that this has a really nice place of maybe if we want to rapidly uh, build a proof of concept for a potential client or someone, um, we can use this to build a kind of REST API interface in like an afternoon as opposed to however long it may take otherwise. Um, but yeah, I'd like to open the floor to any questions. Thank you for listening. 
Thanks, Rafik. Um, I've got a question. Uh, yeah, I mean, firstly, thanks. Good talk. Um, really interesting. Um, so, my experience of of working with serverless um, is that, yeah, like you say, you can use a framework to deploy something uh, quite or relatively quickly or easily compared to, uh, let's say, a server full deployment. Um, I'm interested in, you know, do you know whether Chalice has any functionality that helps you to set up a, f a fully local development environment? Mm -hmm. Or is the idea that you never work in a fully local development environment, and that you're always working in a kind of in a dev environment on AWS, if you like? Um, because I get it, and I, I I can see the power of it. But ultimately, but if you do get to a stage where you are developing something really intricate, then feedback loop still looks like it's something along the lines of I don't know sixty seconds or something it takes to deploy, right? um so yeah is there any local development functionality um obviously you know it's going to be a bit different to what you should just demonstrate but those are my thoughts yeah um it's a good question uh i may be wrong on this um but as far as i know i think if you try to build it locally it generally just builds the kind of deployment assets and doesn't necessarily and i don't think there is a way of running it locally um although it may be that they've brought something out more recently that does allow you to run it locally it is it is tricky to debug i mean there's on, on the one hand you can say that um it's nice to have this development environment where you are in the uh in the actual basically production environment um at also very low cost um so that you know that basically if you build something locally it will work in the production environment because you have basically developed it in an identical environment to production i mean the major drawback of this is not only the time it takes to deploy um a function is also the time it takes to uh for the logs to get passed to aws um so when i was setting up this project there were some issues which i ran across and often it takes it can take up to five minutes to find the actual logs passed to uh, like cloudwatch um which is pretty frustrating if you're trying to build something um there are alternatives to this um i know that there are some frameworks where you build kind of functions as a service yourself. Like I know, I think there's one which is runs in Kubernetes, but I think with that, you you lose a lot of the power of ease of building and not having to manage servers if you are doing functions as a service yourself running on Kubernetes. You're basically losing <laughs> many of the uh, pluses of using the serverless architecture in the first place no sure thanks um yeah brilliant okay cool. and in fact i did have one other question sorry i don't want to hog but um i think no, on, no, no, on, the, on your first slide you mentioned um that one of the benefits was kind of i think you said something along the lines of scalability on a module by module basis is that what you said yeah um, and I, so I just wanted to check then. So when you were, when you, I think you deployed either three or four times during that demo. And so each time that was just updating a Lambda function. So the first time it just deployed the, you know, the, the, the create endpoint. And then the second time you deployed the create and the list and it just overrode. So you weren't creating separate Lambda functions on a function by function basis, right? No, that was all that all creates in one um lambda function um you'd have to define separate files if you wanted to create separate lambda functions um you don't want to build you don't want, you don't want to have one lambda function be too large because you will have um performance kind of detriment um but there are also pluses to having one lambda function handle kind of multiple aspects um a big one is that if a 
Lambda function is inactive for a while unless you have keep warm enabled. Um, it may take some time to kind of warm up that Lambda function and for it to execute. Um, so there are benefits as long as your Lambda functions are staying reasonably small of kind of grouping functionality together, mainly because it means that they'll be more often active and more often kind of ready to go and ready to be called. Cool, thank you. Um, I have a question. Uh, what permissions do you need to actually deploy um, Chalice? Um, I'm presuming you're not are you using a root user or um, is it a uh, that's um, that's a good point. I forgot to go through that in the presentation. So I have um, my uh, AWS uh, access key and my secret key uh, defined in like dot AWS directory in my uh, home directory. Um, I am using a root user at the moment, but I imagine. And I haven't tested this, so but I I strongly imagine that you could do it with a kind of least privileges principle. Um, I mean, it is some because it creates the IAM roles. Um, that account which you are creating generally would have the ability to alter and change roles on other accounts, so it has to have quite a lot of permissions. Um, but I don't think it has to be a, a root user, no. Yeah, I mean, the, the answer to that is absolutely it won't be. Um, you, yeah. You'd be able to do it using, uh, yeah, least privilege principle, basically, um, which would be fine and would be the way to do it. But maybe not if you're just doing it as a demo for this presentation. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, thanks. Um, okay, uh, if that sounds like it might be all the questions, unless someone was going to jump in. Sounds like no. it. Um, so yeah, thank oh. you, Feet. Really interesting. Uh, and yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, thanks everyone.